Hi, so are you thinking about doing some remodeling before you sell your house? Well, I love helping people figure this out, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Today's video, I'm gonna do a little walkthrough of what I did with a client who sold a townhouse in Campbell, California recently with me. And what we did do, which paid off big, and what we decided not to do because we still got a great return without doing it. So most people love the before and after, so it's kind of the road we're going down, but, but be sure to stick around to the end because I've got this really great information sheet for you that I want to go over because it'll really help you if you're in the process of deciding what you should or shouldn't do. But anyway, let's get started. We're going to take a look at some pictures and video. Okay, you guys, so I did kind of blow it. I forgot to take all the before pictures before we started the construction. I just get so in the present, I forget these details sometimes, but notice ceilings, paint colors, and lighting in all these pictures. Um, so see the yellow there? That's dated, that is not good. There's, it's a little dark. I don't see a ceiling, anything, any ceiling lights. We did take off the popcorn. So it had popcorn in the ceilings and they were taking all of that off. There's no ceiling light there. There's the fireplace, had dated tile around it. And that's, you know, in your main family room. So when you walk in the front door, this is what you're looking at. So you look straight ahead at that fireplace. Um, so here we had already started working on the ceiling because it didn't have a, an attractive ceiling light. You can see the orange walls. We had already started with the cabinets too. It had brown cabinets before, but see the ceiling? We lifted the ceiling, soffit ceiling and um, Here's upstairs in the master. Again, they had started, um, you know, taking off popcorn ceiling. Here's the, the primary bathroom that cabinet was already in. It just sort of looks dull and a little bit um, dark, right? So here, look so much brighter. I mean, I know it's staged and all, but still so much brighter with the recessed lighting and that neutral paint color. Remember, this is what it was before, the brown and the pale yellow and no ceiling light. What a difference. Just It just feels like a new space with light and bright. And here's the kitchen as they're working on it. Look at that. See the recessed lighting we put in the ceiling? The countertops, all the lighting, it just looks fantastic. It, it just feels so much better, right? Because it's just so bright and light in there. I know they're professional pictures, but still. And here's the dining room area. We put in some recessed lighting. That was it before, it feels dark. Just, just kind of dark. Look at that, it just, I love it. Paint, you guys, paint and lighting is so critical. Look at this room. We didn't put any recessed lighting in here, but just neutralizing a kind of lighter paint color just made it feel so much better. And then one thing we did in both bathrooms was what we call reglaze. So this is the primary shower. You can see down by the drain they had you know, tried to do some repairs because the stains, look at the tile on the sides, the grout is dark. You can see the door, the glass door is old. Um, I wish I had a better picture, sorry. But it, it was salvageable because it all was white, right? See, you can see the door there. We we're measuring for the glass door. Um, but instead of having it all redone, you know, ripped out, we had it reglazed and got a new shower door. So it literally looked all brand new. And if you have someone that knows what they're doing with reglazing, look at that tile. It looks perfect. It looks brand new. Um, but if the reglazing will last, it'll last a couple of years. So it's not like, you know, you're giving the buyer a lemon per se. And we had to disclose that it was reglazed. But look at it from that picture. It looks fantastic. The sellers had already done that vanity and the light. So that looks so great. But the shower looked really old and now it didn't. Again, not the best pictures. We also did the same things. They had the same white tile in the hall bath with a tub. And we had that reglazed as well. So for probably less than $2,000, well, probably even less than that, $1,500, for the primary bath, you know, the glazing was around 500 and the shower door was around 1500, 12, maybe a little less, 1200. 
and then the reglazing in that hall bath. It, both bathrooms look brand new and it didn't cost an arm and a leg. And let's go back to the kitchen. You know, sometimes they, they say it's not good to redo the entire kitchen if you don't have to, but in a smaller space like this, it's so much more cost effective to just replace the cabinets. These are all wood shaker cabinets with soft closed hinges, and it just, that costs less than it would to paint them. So a lot of people make that mistake. They want to paint cabinets, but if you're in a smaller kitchen like this, it's usually more cost effective to just replace them, especially if you know where to buy them. And we got rid of the old cream tile with brown grout that was so dated and, and it just looks so much more updated, all put together, it made huge difference as buyers walked in. And then remember the fireplace, it had the brown mantle, had old, you know, just dated looking tile. And by updating that, it was one of the first things that would catch a buyer's eye as they walked in and look at it. We'd matched the tile to have like a, you know, white with a gray vein through it. So it matched the kitchen and painted the mantle. And it just made it pop and feel fresh and clean. So I really think some of the key things to note is that the floor is the same throughout the entire house. So that kind of brings the cohesiveness and it makes a space feel larger often. We did the same paint color throughout. We added some recessed lighting. We updated a little bit of the bathrooms and we did the biggest part of the update in the kitchen. But the things we didn't do was we didn't rip out all the bathrooms and start from new. We figured out a solution a cost-effective solution. We didn't update all the interior doors, but we painted them. You'll see in another picture. Um, by painting everything and neutralizing the walls, neutralizing the floors, it added so much value to the buyer's perspective. They thought, oh my gosh, everything felt new. And they sort of didn't notice the things that weren't redone, like the interior doors everywhere or the closet doors. And that's where you can save money when I first met these clients, I thought if we really didn't do anything, they'd probably get around 950,000 for it. It's a great location. But by doing, putting money into it, they probably put in around 25,000. They had updated the floors before meeting me, but with, between the kitchen and the reglazing in the bathrooms, uh, we ended up with a sale price of 1.2 million huge difference. So the lighting, the neutralizing paint color, updating that small kitchen so it felt bigger made a huge difference on the end. So you have to be careful about, you know, blanket statements of what you should or shouldn't do to a house prior to selling. Every house is different. Every space is different and every house needs different things. So you have to determine what is most important for you. But for me, neutralizing walls, neutralizing floors, and lighting, all huge, 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 huge impacts. Um, sometimes you get away with reglazing bathrooms. Sometimes you can get away with painting kitchen cabinets. Um, every situation is different, like I said, but these sellers were super happy and I loved working with them. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. I know I'm not the best at the before pictures. I, gosh, I just forget sometimes. <laughs> um, but I still hope the information was helpful. And now the document that I mentioned before, so I have a sheet that breaks down uh, the ROI percentage the return on investment percentage that you will get out of doing certain remodeling jobs in your house before selling. So below, go to my description and I have a link where you can access that document. It's been updated within the year, so it's really helpful just as a guideline what you should do or shouldn't do before selling. If you have any questions you think I could answer in a video format, please comment below. That also helps me subscribe, all that stuff. Anyway, until next time, have a great one.